When I started making cybersecurity videos almost two years ago, I spent a number of videos on SASE or SASE, which stands for Secure Access Service Edge. In those videos, I stated that the goal of SASE was to have a single provider offering several security solutions under one umbrella and manageable through one portal. Gartner's just published a market guide on the single vendor SASE uh, marketplace or industry. Let's unpack this publication and see where Gartner believes the industry stands. At the end, I'll give you my perspective on where I see things and whether or not I agree with Gartner. <laughs> Let's find out. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG. And while I work for ARG, this video is my own and is not a reflection of the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is dedicated to helping IT leaders make great business decisions. So single vendor SASE, is it here? Before we unpack Gartner's publication, and by the way, I have a link back to Gartner's website in the description of this video for proper attribution, and the reprint of their SASE single vendor publication can be found on many of the service providers mentioned. I did not want to link back to a specific provider and potentially show favoritism to that provider. So uh, those of you who have watched my other videos know that I work hard to be neutral in these, and unless I'm specifically reviewing a particular product, I generally don't advocate for one provider or another, because they're all great in their own uh, respects, but it really comes down to the individual requirements and use cases of, of an organization as to who will be favored in any one evaluation. And that's what my company does. So the feedback that I get on this neutrality is that it's appreciated, and I hope you feel the same way. So I'm sorry for this, the slight inconvenience of not being able to link directly to the document. Just for background, I'm going to link a SASE playlist in the notes of this video so you can get a detailed explanation on SASE if you need one. At a super high level, SASE, or again, Secure Access Service Edge, is a framework developed by Gartner just prior to the pandemic. The framework was a response to an increasingly distributed workforce and increasingly distributed technology stack. Workers were becoming more mobile and workloads were being shifted into the cloud, SaaS platforms, and other non-private data center environments. Little did Gartner know that six months after coming out their framework, uh, with their framework, the world would be thrown into a work from home model for the next two years due to COVID-19. SASE is even more relevant today. IT organizations had to scramble to address the new work from home construct and are now circling back to rationalize their investments. This takes time and SASE should be uh, a centerpiece if not the centerpiece of their strategy. The SASE framework is constructed of a number of cloud-based managed services. And I want to emphasize managed services here as Gartner encourages that most organizations, especially medium and small organizations who cannot support their point solutions with sufficient expertise, to use a managed service provider. The only, um, only the largest entities really with significant staffing capabilities are able to establish the proper uh, expertise level and the proper staffing uh, levels to manage everything on their own. The cloud delivery aspect is important because users of the SASE platform need to have the ability of accessing the platform from any network, on any device, and from any location. Cloud enables this flexibility. Rather than forcing all corporate traffic into a single data center just to be sent back out to the internet to access the desired cloud solution and then back through the single data center, uh, only to be forwarded back out to the user someplace else and over the public internet, probably. SASE, uh, on the other hand, is comprised of two larger categories. Network as a service, that includes managed network services, primarily outside network, but I believe there's also space for internal network as well in the definition. Uh, managing terminating equipment, such as routers, or more and more frequently SD-WAN, which stands for Software Defined Wide Area Networking. Again, lots of videos on SD-WAN on my channel. And the other category, um, the, the second category is security as a service, including things such as network-based firewalls, secure internet gateway, CASB, which stands for a cloud access security broker, zero trust, remote browser services, cloud-based DNS, and I'm probably missing one or two like intrusion detection and protection and a few others. There are lots of videos regarding these topics on my channel as well. Most of these security services are now collect collectively called Security Service Edge, or SSE, by Gartner. 
I will also say in my view of the world, endpoint detection and response should be included in SASE, but EDR is not included on, on the official list. You can make your own determination there. SASE was a vision of the future where all of these point solutions would be merged into a single provider platform and live in harmony with each other, avoiding overlapping gaps that can sometimes develop when we're managing multiple solutions, right? So the cost would be lower because you would not pay for redundant capabilities in the multiple solutions. Deep packet inspection is the one example I use frequently to demonstrate redundant capabilities. So how many solutions do you have today where you're paying for deep packet inspection? Now, you may not have it turned on everywhere, but there's a good chance you're paying for it everywhere. Another benefit of SASE was that performance would be enhanced because first, since all the solutions are single vendor platform, you can have what is known as single pass inspection, where the packet is decrypted once and the various security protocols are performed at that time. This is compared to having each point solution separately decrypt each packet, re-encrypt it, and send it to the next point solution for a similar process, very inefficient. Now, this is all great stuff and would be very beneficial when we can realize it. There are a ton more benefits to SASE, but we have limited time here, so I don't want to bore you with all of those who are already familiar with SASE. If you need more information, you guessed it, just check out my other videos. So when Gartner published the framework, there were very few SASE solutions on the market. Point solutions were flourishing, and while some mergers and acquisitions were happening, there was not a lot of real operational consolidation going on. We were all looking out into the future for some functional efficiencies and wondering how long we had to wait. So I'll get to the punchline. In Gartner's Market Guide for Single Vendor SASE, their first key finding reads, the market for well-architected single vendor SASE offerings is immature but developing quickly. SASE interest among our clients has been growing rapidly. There you have it. We're not quite at a single vendor SASE nirvana yet, but we're working our way towards that, and Gartner later forecasts in their report that single vendor SASE will be at about a 25% take rate by 2025, just two short years from now. Gartner encourages organizations to start their single vendor um, SASE strategy now by engaging with a couple of vendors that are working on their single vendor strategy, but individually may not have the best in class services or offerings in all areas. My personal editorial here is that you should not, you should certainly not uh, just review individual point solutions today without seriously considering how you might start down your SASE journey. Now, this is in line with Gartner's other projection in the, in the document that 80% of organizations will have a SASE strategy by 2025. Strategies that were developed over the previous years, like now. One of the uh, last forecasts I'll share with you from Gartner was by 2025, 50% of all SD-WAN purchases will be part of a single vendor SASE offering. I would say that and within our organization, uh, we're already at 50% of SD-WAN sales being with a vendor that is developing a single provider SASE platform, and those SD-WAN purchases are made specifically to leverage the single provider strategy with a high interest in future capabilities. So they're not leveraging all the capabilities today because, again, as Gartner says, there's, uh, there are varying levels of maturity within those solutions, but they are buying into a provider's um, development path and are anxiously awaiting the time when they can take advantage of uh, more mature products as they, as they come out. <laughs> to, um, to address this lack of any single provider having a mature solution, Gartner recommends using two providers until we reach that maturity level. Each one of the providers can fill the sassy gaps of the other. SD-WAN and Secure Service Edge might be provided by two vendors today, for example. Another scenario where you have network-based firewall and secure web browsing from one provider and zero trust access from another, um, you know, might be possible. But some configurations might overly complicate traffic flow, so you have to be careful there. My personal view of the world is that I agree with Gartner's assessment that, you, um, that we are not there yet in terms of a mature single vendor solution. However, most organizations are not looking to forklift um, in a brand new or forklift, a brand new um, end to end security solution. Most organizations have a refresh schedule that can be followed and, 
and picking off individual SASE services over time to constitute a complete SASE posture within a refresh cycle. So um, this one thing at a time process will lead to a great advance over time and fulfill that long-term SASE vision. There are single vendor SASE solutions that meet most of the needs of most mid-sized organizations. So I would say there are some single vendor SASE solutions out there today if your needs are not deep. Um, most of the providers today have some level of capability across most of the SASE categories. And so if you don't need a real deep solution, there, there may be a single provider out there for you. Um, I'll also suggest that Gartner doesn't disagree with this approach. They list it as one of the viable methods in their publication, but they do seem to lean on the dual vendor approach as their preferred solution. So I just want to be clear there. My view of the dual vendor approach is that, um, is that it might lead to more complexity between the two platforms. And this complexity that maybe a large organization can manage, but mid-sized companies um, probably don't need that level of complexity in my view. In Gartner's Magic uh, Quadrant, or Market Guide, excuse me, they list about a dozen firms that are on the path to single vendor SASE. My company has solutions for all the vendors listed, so if you're looking at a SASE um, strategy but don't know where to start, feel free to reach out. My contact information is in the description of this video. If you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like, a thumbs up, and thank you very much in advance for doing that. And if you want to return to my channel in the future, the best way of finding your, back, your way back here is to hit that subscribe button. That will put my videos in your feed as they come out and you can find your way back here at your convenience. Thanks very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.